Do you want to learn something else besides Firebase for your next project? Maybe even something that is open source just like Flutter. In this case, the solution is called AppRite, which is a open source backend server for web, mobile and Flutter developers. You will get solutions for things out of the box such as the database, authentication and so on. And with that, let's set up the AppRite backend. It's as simple as just copying the specific install command. I'm using Windows and WSL and make sure to have Docker installed. And because this solution is using Docker, we have full control where we want to host this backend. By running this command, you will get the latest version of the AppRite image. For this video, we are going to use the default configurations. It will just be a matter of answering the questions and we will have the backend set up and running. If I open Docker Desktop, we can see that the AppRite server is actually already running, which is a bundle of a bunch of different solutions. Let's head over to localhost on our browser and create an account. And in here, we can start by setting up a project. After we have set up the project, we can navigate into it and you can see that we have support for things like database. And this will be very similar if you have used an Firebase before. With AppRite, you also have storage support, so you can upload files or images. And we also have the user sections, which is the equivalence to authentication in Firebase. And here you can see all of the different ways that we can sign in. We can use email password, but we can also implement things like Google sign in. If your project requires server side functions, they also have support for that. And also things like webhooks. Let's start off by just setting up the sign in sign up page as well as the home page for our app. I've created this UI template beforehand that you can simply just copy paste by just navigating into the different files and copy paste into your own project. This is mainly that we don't spend too much time on the actual UI parts. Taking a quick look at the project, we can see that we're using a normal navigator with a login view, a register view and a home view. This is using a simple form for the login and register view with a method. In the method, we will call our logic for handling the authentication and then navigate to the home view. Let's navigate to our main.dart file and go ahead and import AppRite. So of course they have a Flutter package. Here we instantiate the client. The client is going to set up the configuration for AppRite. We're setting up the endpoint, which are going to take our requests, as well as setting up the project ID, which you can find in the AppRite dashboard. We're also going to use the self-signed certificate. They have full documentation for when you actually want to have this up for production. For simplicity, we're going to use Riverpod to provide these objects. But you can use inherited widget, provider, get it, or whatever else that you prefer. And then of course we set up the provider scope and we have the full configuration for Riverpod. Now to actually make requests, such as setting up the user account, we're going to instantiate a account object and passing the client to it. And use the correction, the providers is going to be lowercase. One more thing we have to do is because we are using the Android emulator, we have to make sure that the local endpoint is actually working for the Android emulator. To do that, we're going to use a simple ternary operator. By checking if we are on the Android platform, we're going to set it to the private IP. Now we have made the required configuration for using AppRite. Remember there are also configurations that you have to do on Android and iOS, which I will link the documentation below. Now to actually create the account, Let's go ahead and navigate to register view and scroll down to the method where we actually validate and register. Here you can see that I added a comment for adding the register logic. As we're using Riverpod to actually get the object or the provider, we need to convert our stateful widget to a consumer widget. Now we can go ahead and use ref to actually read the provider or in this case, the app right account provider. This has a method called create where we can create the user account. In this case, we're not going to provide the name because that's optional, but it's up to you if you want to provide that as well. For the user ID, we can pass in unique to make it a unique user ID. And then we can pass the email and password that we have set using the form. Now this is all fine, but what if something in this fails, meaning that the user is not created? Let's go ahead and wrap this in a try catch to actually validate that. And in this case, we can actually specifically catch the app write exception we're not going to specifically handle it here, but we'll for now just print it to the console. Let's go ahead and navigate to the login view and do a similar thing here. And once again, we're using Riverpod, so go ahead and convert the stateful widget to a consumer stateful widget. So navigate down to our method here and add a logic for logging into our account. We will use the AppRite account provider and call create session. 
Here they require two things, the email and password, which we already have because this is the login view. Now we also have to do the similar thing as before and cast the upright exception and we'll just print it to a console. Let's take a look at the app and navigate to the register. We can pass in a email. In this case, I will just add a fake email and a password. And in this case, I have validation for having eight characters. We can see that that navigated into the app. And if I do a hot restart, we should see that we get into the login view again, and we're going to handle that as well. But just to validate that the login is working, by inputting our same email and password, we should log in and navigate to the home view. Now, if we head over to the app right dashboard, you should see that we have made a request. And this is coming from the user that we have created. So let's go ahead and navigate to the users section. We can see that we have a user with an unknown name and that's because we just didn't add a name. Now, what if we start the app and we want to automatically log in? Go ahead and navigate to the login view and we can add the logic here. We're going to create a simple method which is called check current user. We're going to once again use provider to get the account from AppRight. And here we can call the method get which will get the account. Once we have gotten the account, we will go ahead and navigate to the home view and pass the argument for the email, which we get directly from the user object created by the AppRight account. Now in this case, there could be times where this fail, for example, when we haven't signed in. So let's go ahead and wrap this in a try catch statement. And again, for simplicity, we will do a debug print. Now we have the logic implemented. Now the only thing left is actually calling this in init state. So let's override init state method and then call our check current user. Now that should be all to actually automatically log us in. So let's give it a shot. Here we have the login view. So let's go ahead and make a hot restart and we should see that we automatically sign in and navigate to the homepage. But what about the database with collections and documents? For simplicity, let's head over to the database section and create a new collection called superpowers. For now, let's just leave everything to default and let's try and create a document and you will see that we need to create first a attribute. By creating attributes, we decide how our documents are going to look. In this case, we're just going to have a string attribute. The idea for this attribute is going to be very simple. It's just going to be called power and we're going to make it required. That means that when we head over to actually create a document, we can see that it's required to add a power and in this case, we'll just add a invisibility power. Here you can also set the permissions for document specific permissions. We will ignore that because we will set the collection with a specific permission. As a default, no one can read the collection. So let's head over to the settings of it and we can set the collection level read access. Here you can also set the write access as well as the document level access. For simplicity, we'll make it so that everyone can read this collection by using the wildcard role colon all. Now go ahead and save that and let's display it in our app. We'll do this in the home view. So let's just create our provider for this. This is going to be the superpowers provider, which is just a future provider with the type of document list. And this is almost identical to the other providers. We will get the client and instantiate a database and then just return the database with the list documents and give it the collection ID. The collection ID can be found in the dashboard and here we have ours. Now we can just go ahead and scroll down and implement the UI for this. We'll just add some simple spacing and then a list view builder. We can use Riverpod here and use the when statement and we can implement data as well as loading an error. And again, for simplicity, we'll just set the error to just display a text and loading with a circular progress indicator. As we want to use a list view builder inside a column, we have to use a expanded. And let's create a widget called powers and pass it a list. And if we scroll down and just implement this widget, you can see that it's very simple. We're just going to take the document list and inside the build method, we're just going to create a list view builder take the total of documents that we got them from the collection. Now inside the item builder, we need to get the powers. We can use the list.convert2 to actually get the specific list in the object we want. In this case, we just want to convert it to a string. The power in this case is the attribute for the document. Let's go ahead and show it in a text and make sure it's aligned to the center. And now we can see that in the home view, we have the invisibility document that is gotten from AppRight. Now, this was just scratching the surface. They also have support for things like real time. You can also sign up to AppRight Cloud, which will be released this summer. And you can find everything on the AppRight website. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to check out this video as well.